Hey everybody, hi, it's Rob from Old Style Classics Baseball Cards. Nice to see y'all. Um, wanted to do a video yesterday, but just uh, never had a chance and I uh, got tired and finally had to go to bed. So, um, so I got five eBay packages today. This one's pretty big. I'm not too sure what, oh, I think I know what this might be. So I might have some cool stuff for you. Maybe I should wait for my wife to see this. But she ran off to the Costco to get some snacks for some work thing they're doing tomorrow. Um, but I shall move forward. All right, let me get my glasses on here. Oops, I didn't turn this light on. Let's see if that makes any difference. All right, so um, told you this week, um, the other day, I wanted to go... To a couple of local card shops um, one of them's kind of like a um, I wouldn't really it, it's a local card shop but it's more of like a, it seems like some guy's hobby you know like he opened a store and um, they do have some product there super overpriced and a bunch of singles but it's not a big shop by any means it's probably the you know size of a hallway if anything kind of looks like a hallway um, but I haven't been there in like a year and um, they do have some boxes you know some um, cheapy box um, dollar boxes and stuff like that so just went to see what they had anything new they pretty much looked the same to me as over like a year ago a bunch of different singles graded stuff mostly uh, modern you know maybe a display and a half of baseball one display of football some basketball and um <clears throat> maybe some random stuff like soccer mostly it looks like they sell like blasters and um shiny stuff chrome and all that kind of stuff and then they have a few small things here and there maybe some old um they, like complete sets or built sets of like 80s flare and dunross and tops uh, so nothing special, nothing um, like major hobby stock, hobby shop kind of stuff. Um, so it, it just kind of feels like some dude's got some money and he's like, oh, I want to open a card sh shop. and But they don't really have like a real relationship with like distributor or tops or something like that. They didn't have any Allen and Ginter or anything like that. So, but um, I guess I've told the story before I got to it. Um, so the other day I wanted to go to the local card shops, but got off to a late start on a Saturday. So I just went to the one that I needed to get some top loaders and stuff like that from. And, um, that's where I got the clearly authentic that we looked at. And we got the Alex Kurloff. Um, then I got the Gypsy Queen. blaster to go up against one of my own and Ginter blasters that I still have and um, then I showed you some of those local card shop pickups that I had like the Dawson um, upper deck um, the, the Allen and Ginter chrome and um, the Reggie Jackson and the Ray LaMotta and, or whatever LaMotta card um, so I didn't get to go to that other shop, so I said oh, I'll go do that on Sunday. So yesterday I went over there um, about an hour before they closed. The guy said hi, some kid working there. I think he was there last time. Uh, didn't say a word to me for like the 40 minutes that I was in the store. And then I just found a few cards in their um, bargain bin because none of the other stuff was anything I was really interested in. Uh, the only card that I did see there that uh, I would have kind of thought would have been cool was they did have an Oback Mike Trout uh, from the convention, little mini, uh, graded in a, it might have been his rookie card, I'm not too sure, but that, that was pretty cool, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of money, so I was like, I like it because I like minis and I like Oback, but I don't like it that much. So anyways, I grabbed this little sticker, um. So it's called Kip's Card Shop, and that's in Los Altos, California. 
It's just off of um, Central Expressway. No, not Central. Foothill Expressway. And um, I think Esquela. There's a little um, kind of old-fashioned little um, strip mall right there. And it kind of looks like the old um, 70s or 60s kind of a ski lodge kind of place and you know got a few um, yogurt shops and a little grocery store over there and then this little card shop kind of buried in the back there but they, they got some cool singles if you like graded stuff and more expensive and shiny chrome and all that kind of stuff this you know might want to check them out so it is another um, little shop that is in the South Bay uh, it's pretty easy to get to if you know how to get to um, Foothill Expressway. Just head up like you're going from uh, Sunnyvale, Cupertino. And like if you were heading up to uh, Palo Alto or Stanford, it's about halfway in between the two. It's off to the right if you're going up north. And um, yeah, I think it's at uh, Foothill Expressway in Escuela. So there you go if you're interested. Uh, probably be another year or so before I go there again because I don't really carry the kind of stuff that I like. But I did find a few singles. Um, so nothing against the shop. I mean, the kid's not super friendly or anything like that, but he's not rude either. Um, pretty pricey though, so. But you might find some singles and uh, some graded stuff that you might like. So there's their information. And uh, the Rancho Shopping Center in Los Altos, California. Pretty pretty ritzy area of uh, the Bay. South Bay. Um, kind of foothills. And I think that's where Beyonce rented a, rented a house when she came here for the Super Bowl a couple years back. For like a million dollars a night or something like that. Some of those big houses are up there. Um but it's not like Beverly Hills. I mean, they got some nice stuff, but it's not like super mansions. It's pretty much just in the woods. All right, so that's Kip's card shop. So let's show you what I got. Uh, I got me some um, sweet um, I guess people might call some garbage cards. Um, basically, I got me some oddball stuff, some either food issues or uh, you know just some other things and definitely got me some MSA stuff but let me go ahead and show you I'm pretty sure I already have this but it was there so I was like I'll pick it up so got me a KB uh, tops did KB that year and there's an Andre Dawson superstars of baseball number nine to 33 so one of those little box boxes that you would get a KB at the time and um, so yeah it looks like 1989 so that's still playing career card for Andre yeah he had only had 298 home runs at that point in time in 88 he batted 303 24 home runs so that was way down um, but he had a good batting average all right, so got me another Andre Dawson to put in my uh, binder. I love oddball cards, so I don't just collect Alan and Ginter. I do love odd. I, I like all cards, don't get me wrong. I just have ones that I prefer, and I like these old-fashioned ones. And they these little boxes, you know, the little boxes like the KB, like 9 of 33, they're kind of somewhere in between regular baseball cards and... and uh, oddball to me that there are kind of on the oddball side because it is like a product specific to a, a company to try to get you in there um, but it's not like it comes in one of their toys you know so there's somewhere in between that it still falls into that kind of weird stuff that I like but anyways love me an Andre Dawson pretty good looking card tops they did all right on these little sets um Sometimes they were better than the regular cards. That one's not centered great, but you could probably pick a box of this up, like full on box for three or five bucks, something like that. 
And then number two, one of my favorite sets growing up, and I told you guys how like an 87 is when I really started buying like card packs, like a whole lot of them. Uh, before that, I would just get some here and there, a pack here and a pack there, but mostly what I would get was all the oddball stuff like in food and cereal. So my favorite cards that I had prior to 87, other than the Tasty Freeze disc, was um, I really dug the... Um, 1984 Rostin Purina. Um, so this was a 33-card set. I mean, this is a 33-card set, but I think that's like the size of a sheet. So that's why a lot of these boxes would either be 33 or like 44. And the same thing with some of the insert sets that they did on uh, food issues and stuff was because that's how many cards they can get out of one sheet. So they would just have to reprint the same sheet a million times and then insert the stuff into the cereal. So anyways, you got this 84 Wade Boggs, Rost and Perina, and those were uh, collect all 33 baseball cards by purchasing specially marked packages of Cookie Crisp, Donkey Kong, and other Rost and cereals. And then they went ahead and um, did another couple in the later 80s, and uh, but they had moved on to MSA because it's a lot cheaper than using tops and getting um, licensing from um, Major League Baseball. They would just do the Players Association. But we did get a tops Wade Boggs, so that's an early Boggs. That looks pretty well centered and it's a pretty nice card. And these were all like a dollar. Um, this one might have been two dollars. But I wasn't going to haggle because. I like oddball stuff and I may have this one but I'm not sure but if I see one that's nice you know I'll pick it up because it never hurts to have extra and that was a cool set I really dig the um checkerboard that Prina had Most, a lot of people think that these are dog food cards or pet food cards but no Rost and Prina would be just kind of like um General Mills at the time or one of these company like Kellogg's or Post um, but because they did dog food and all that people mistake this but no it was out of cereal like a cookie crisp and a cookie crisp um, in the 80s had a lot of um, premiums and, and giveaways like this you know I remember getting like a jazz transformer from buying a few boxes of Cookie Crisp and sitting away and then it would send you a transformer in the mail. Now it wasn't in a box, it was just like in a cellophane bag with all the stickers and the you know the the guns and stuff. But yeah, it was like super cheap. You know, you can get like a full size transformer for like a few boxes of cereal, which we're gonna eat anyways. If you um UPC codes or whatever and uh, like three bucks and you can get yourself like fifteen twenty dollar transformer and uh, back in those days you know a kid you didn't have fifteen twenty dollars so to get something for a few bucks that your parents would be like all right yeah we can do that so they had a lot of cool stuff and uh, they did um, baseball cards a couple times after this uh, so that's a nice card for you Wade Boggs collectors all right, now we're gonna move on to MSA. This is one of my favorite card, I don't know if card company is the right word, but uh, the company that licensed these cards and had them printed for all these different companies, we'll just call them marketing firm, but we'll say the baseball, MSA baseball cards, you know, that's Michael Schechner and Associates. I don't know if it's a marketing firm, a lawyer, I'm going to do a whole um, episode or, or episodes on MSA because most people just talk about like who the card was for, like what product they were made for. But it's really that MSA company and they actually did have a few times they did licensing. Like this next card is going to be a licensed card, um, but they had uh, MSA do the cards because obviously they're cheaper than tops or Flair or Dunross probably and um, I like them I like how they're kind of simple sometimes they're ugly 
but sometimes they're ugly in that cool simplistic old-fashioned way and so you know, a lot of your starting lineup stuff so there you go that's a licensed MSA card and um, basically he you know, Michael Schenkner and Associates they um, got the licensing for um, like the Major League Baseball or the Players Association um, early in you know in well in the mid 70s they sent out like um, they're the ones that did the discs like the Isley discs and Tasty Freeze um, they sent those out to like companies like Tasty Freeze and all these places and then uh, hey if you're interested in them um, we can make some of these cards for you they would be discs they did them for soda pop you'll see some of the giant ones like this size like Mangini's got some um, or they did the little King B discs or Jiffy Pop and Fantastic Sands and Chef Boyardee you name it MSA was probably behind it a few companies did their own like maybe Cracker Jack they they kind of didn't well, they, there were times they had Tops and Dunross do it, but they would either get somebody to print them for them or um, so when they didn't use like this company. But for the most part, your cheapy uh, giveaway cards in the 80s and 90s were uh, MSA. And some of them are really nice. And um, they don't, you know, they're not worth a whole lot. And, but I think they're awesome. I will admit... Though, like, if you did get cards and cereal, like, in the 80s, and you were going to get, like, a 33-card set like these, you know, and that's even tops. You know, the one thing about those products is you were going to get, like, the stars. You know, so you're always going to get, like, the best players or maybe the hot prospects at the time. Uh, unlike the old Post or Kellogg's cards, which had hundreds of cards. You know, you were just going to get like 33 best players the year before. So that's probably, and you know, there's millions of them. So if you got a Mark McGuire out of one of those things, that's probably why it wasn't as expensive as his regular one because you were going to, you know, you bought five boxes of cereal, you're probably going to get three Mark McGuire's. So, but a lot of these were junk to people and they would toss aside. And, um, no, you know, I, I wouldn't say they're rare by any means, but I think they're just awesome. And, uh, if you're looking for some uh, good players from back in the day and, uh, you want to do something different instead of the same old tops like everyone else is doing, you know, everyone's going for tops. Oh, they got to do tops run or Bowman or, or Flair or Dunross and, you know, all the main sets. You know, I like to be a little different. I like things a little different, and I like uh, MSA. I like Tops, and I like those other ones too, but I, I just got a soft spot in my heart for MSA because, to me, being put into a product is how baseball cards started, and that's, to me, what real baseball cards always were. Now, Tops and all that being just the product is the baseball cards, that's fine but I'm just telling you what I I, I kind of prefer that because it was done in the tradition that cards started as but I like them both don't get me wrong but a lot of people don't really care about this stuff and I do so anyways this is a starting lineup one so um, just a little different than that um, because you know that I was trying to get you to buy the cereal but this you know, you got the starting lineup figure of Ryan Sandberg, and it came with the card, or card in a coin or something. And, uh, you know, I'm a big Cubs fan. I like Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Sandberg. Um, I'm not a super collector of him by any means, but I like him. And he was a great player. I used to love watching Ryan Sandberg play. Um, but Andre Dawson's the guy I chose. Look at that back. Didn't that... I mean, that is very much like those jumbo sunflower seeds back. And I like that. I like that simple, just no BS. And, um, yeah, so I think it's excellent. There's your MSA right there. So 
that is a 1989 so this would have came with the Ryan Sandberg figure and uh, somebody opened it and who knows where the figure is now but there's the card and it's a pretty nice one I know score did some of the ones later they moved on to score but Kenner paid MSA to get this license and then MSA paid a printer to print these up so that Kenner could add them to their starting lineup figures and that's basically what MSA did was there they were like the um the go-to person like hey I, I want to do a special product you know let's put some cards in our popcorn this year okay well do you want to get the license for this it's going to cost you this much mm, if we don't have that and there's no logos how much going to cost oh, it's going to cost you a third as much okay let's do that but sometimes when you're selling a product like starting lineup yeah you, you, you know you want to have the uniforms so the kids would buy the toy all right so there's an msa a really pretty one i'll speak of the devil i didn't even realize i had one of these and there's another ryan sandberg and that is the jumbo california sunflower seeds msa card so i it's not exactly the same as this but a little similar and i do think one of the years they were kind of like this but there you go two ryan sandbergs this one's an 89 and this one's a 90. there's your little msa down here with your major league players association and um once again just simple now this one doesn't have the logo and that's kind of what your traditional um msa cards would look like now the photographs not the best and they would often reuse them like they obviously Kenner shelled out to do a better version but there you go MSA can do a really good card it's just what the company wanted to pay and they were like yeah that's good enough let's just get it out but I like that it just reminds me of like oh tobacco cards or candy cards or something back in the day you can read about old Rhino back then. Look at some of his stats. So, yeah, I dig MSA. Then the next one is uh, we got two of the same guy from the same product, but just a couple years apart. Another Cub, another MSA. And then Post Serial decided to do cards again. And there's a Mark Grace. So a solid player, really good player. Um, got his uh, World Series with Arizona, but he was always a Cub. It's actually pretty good centered. He, you know, this, that's actually really nice for a Post MSA card. The backs were a little ugly on these. Um, you know, a little gaudy, but... So there you go, you got your Players Association thing right here. And then the MSA logo here, copyright. Then the facsimile, autograph, and uh, so they did 30 cards. And this is like, uh, what? Third year card for old Gracie. Simple um, airbrushed image. Probably spring training from the looks of the background there. And uh, so that is the 1990. And then I guess it was still going pretty strong at the time, baseball cards. This one's off-centered. But they also did one in 91. So, I mean, this one's a better looking card, I think. But this is probably a better picture. But the centering on this is off. Uh, it's a 91 collector series. Mark Grace, airbrushed. Uh, back's a little, probably a little nicer on this one. So you got trade offs, you know. They're always, you know, they're trying to be a little different. But basically the same. Everything's the same except the stats. And uh, changed it up here a little bit. But very similar design. 
And um, so yeah, it's a cool card. Uh, Gracie, I don't know if I have this one. I may have the complete sets for all I know, but um, we'll get into my oddball box someday. Um, and then I'll do a whole thing on MSA. Um, but they'll pop in here and there between now and then. I'm still kind of on my little uh, Alan Ginter run right now. Uh, and the 2023. So there's my pickups from that Kips card shop. Gracie, MSA, Grace, MSA, Ryan Sandberg, MSA, Ryan Sandberg, MSA with the license. Wade Boggs Tops with the license. And a KB. So these all came in a product. You know, here, buy our cereal, buy our sunflower seeds, give you some cards. Hey, buy our toy and we'll give you a card on top of it. Hey, coming to KB to buy some toys, but look, you can get this special box of cards that aren't the uh, regular tops or flare or anything like that. And, uh, and you're going to guarantee to get these stars. And it's awesome. I love it. And who knows, in 40 years, you know, maybe these will um, all start to go up when people start to realize, ah. Eh, Anyone could get tops 88 Andre Dawson or 90 Mark Grace, you know, during that junk wax era. But hey, let's get some different stuff that was around back then. You know, let's get the Ty Cobb Carmel card instead of the T206. Uh, let's get the uh, Ty Cobb um, Colgan disc instead of the um, Cracker Jack, you know. I don't know. I think they're cool. I love this stuff. All right, so we are 26 minutes in. Should we start the eBay or should I cut it off there? So maybe I'm just going to cut it off there. Um, then maybe a little later we'll do uh, one of these Ginter boxes that I got. I picked up a couple more at the Walmart Mountain View just to kind of see if they would continue. So I got two more. Um, but I want to do the eBay reveals, so I really wanted to get to those other cards um, because I didn't want the eBay stuff to just over, overshadow that stuff. So I was thinking of doing those and then maybe breaking the Ginter, but I think I'll just cut it off there because it's about a half an hour. And, um, you know, just showed you some uh, recent pickups once again. Anyone looking to trade any kind of Allen and Ginter signature series or these clearly authentic Allen and Ginters for either some of these um, other clearly authentics that I got or the signature series that I have, like the Pete Tukaliv and uh, and I think I got like Eric Davis and some of these guys. So if somebody was ever interested, you know, shoot me a message. Here's the other big card that I picked up the other day so I'd won this on auction this was one of my last eBay reveals these two and um, another Dawson uh, but I did get my black border 2006 Danica Patrick and it was a steal so I've been doing really good lately and I'd actually ordered a bunch of 2023 um, odd stuff hits uh, see they got the don't you hate it when the um one touches backwards one this one card should you know they should always be facing the same way so that when you put these in your box they're not fighting each other they click together but there you go these two are fighting each other all right that sucks so i'll just put this one in backwards and um so there you go. That's my pickup from Kips. Uh, I didn't buy any packs or anything because I didn't have anything I wanted in particular. So right on with the the beginning of the junk wax era and uh, and the cool 80s 
early 80s. All right, so this is Rob at Old Style Classics Baseball Cards. Um, see you later.